This is the Design Spark Podcast. Yes, that's right. The Design Spark Podcast. Lucy Rogers, Beck Hill, and Harriet Brain. We are the presenters, so you'll be entertained as we talk about tech and we have a good laugh about the past and the present and the future and stuff. This is the Design Spark Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Design Spark podcast, where we explore the past, present, and future of some of the hottest topics in tech. I'm Dr. Lucy Rogers, the inventor with a sense of fun. I'm Beck Hill, the stand up with a sense of pun. <laughs> and I'm Harriet Brain, the musical historian. <laughs> this episode, we'll be taking a look at augmenting the human experience to ask the most important question of them all Can I get an upgrade? First class. No, no, I want laser eyes. <laughs> it's time for facts. It's time for facts. Fact time. It's time for facts. Do you want some facts? I want some facts. Well, that's lucky because it's fact time. Did you know there are actually loads of different ways technology can be used to change the way we experience the world? For instance, yeah, augmented reality could be used to enhance your experience at various attractions, like at an art gallery. Right, so augmented reality could be used to tell you where the nearest thing to do that isn't an art gallery. (laughs) Using today's technology, the six million dollar man from the 70s would cost twelve thousand dollars. But if you include and that's just that's just for the I like that wow. Someone's gonna upgrade themselves, aren't they? I've got twelve thousand (laughs) dollars. Um, that's my friend. (laughs) He's my friend now. (laughs) However, that's just for the tech. If you include the cost of medical care, it's a $33 million man. (laughs) Do you have $33 million, mate, now? I do not have that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Tell us about genetic disease. Okay. Um, (laughs) Now that I can do. Um, A genetic disease called myostatin-related muscle hypertro... Oh, dear. (laughs) Hypertro... Hypertrophy. Yes. That's the one. Really? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were pulling my leg then. Uh-huh. Um, a genetic disease called myostatin related muscle hyper. No, oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Hypo- hypertrophy. Hi- whatever. Hypertrophy. Hi- Why hy- did you offer to do this fact? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I thought that words. Um, a genetic disease called myostatin related muscle hypertrophy. That doesn't sound right either. Gives people superhuman. <laughs> Lucy, can you do it? Has anyone got plans for tomorrow? A genetic disease called myostatin related muscle hypertrophy. <laughs> oh, myostatin related muscle hypertrophy gives people. <laughs> Beck! I mean, I. I, I... A genetic disease <laughs> A genetic disease called myostatin related muscle hypertrophy gives super Oh my god <laughs> There's a genetic disease that gives people superhuman strength. <laughs> What's it called though? <laughs> myostatin related muscle hypertrophy. <laughs> sort of. Without apparently any medical downsides. So what would be your superhero name? If I had super strength. If you had a super strength. Um, If you had myostatin-related muscle hypertrophy, (laughs) (laughs) what would be your superhero name? Flex Hill. (laughs) Mine would be Lucy. Ah, because you're saying you're already super strong. Or super loose. (laughs) You know my surname, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Lucy Rogers! I've never. I love puns! And I've never realised that your name is like. a verb! <laughs> <laughs> but those are just facts. Now it's time for some opinions. Does, any, <laughs> does anyone here have some opinions? I have some opinions. Uh, of course you do. Please welcome to the stage the voice of the people, Beck Hill. 
I did some research for this episode on augmented reality, and by doing so, I went out and I bought something called Tooth Tunes. Now, does anyone know what Tooth Tunes is? No, no. no of course you don't, because you're not five, right? <laughs> tooth Tunes is, is a toothbrush that has been marketed to children, and the idea is that when you brush your teeth, it plays music through the toothbrush, through the bristles, onto your teeth, through your bones, so the music plays inside your head. Yeah, I know, isn't that amazing? Like, you're like, I want that now, don't. But, but don't get it, because the only one I could find only played Let's Get It Started by Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> so when I brush my teeth, it's like, let's get it started in here. Let's get it started. And I'm like, my mouth is not big enough for that party. <laughs> Honestly, and after two minutes, it does the best thing ever. After two minutes to say it's time to finish brushing your teeth, it does this little voice. It goes, do, 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 yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Shouldn't all things have that? Like, all adult inventions should have that. Shouldn't they? <laughs> they like, when, like, the washing machine stops and it's like, do, 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 yes! I'm like, yeah, I did do the washing. <laughs> like, when you submit your self-appraisal to HMRC. <laughs> do, 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 yes! Or when you write a third joke to complete the rule of three. <laughs> do, 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 yes! <laughs> But I do, it does make me wonder, we've forgotten that it's okay to be bored. And I think that is a problem. We're so bored, we're trying to augment ourselves to make our lives more interesting. I mean, it's not enough just to brush your teeth. You now need a mediocre pop band playing inside your brain to make that interesting. You know, it's not enough just to take a selfie. You need a filter to make yourself look like a dog with massive eyes. It's, it's not enough to run a music festival in the Bahamas. <laughs> needs to be a luxury music festival with Ja Rule. <laughs> and that's the problem. We're now getting to a stage where real life doesn't live up to the augmented realities we've created. I mean, where does it end? Netflix on the inside of our eyelids so that we don't get bored while we're sleeping? <laughs> You know, adding speakers into babies' mouths so that when they cry, it auto-tunes into Enya. <laughs> so cats with screens on their faces so that we can watch videos of other cats that are more interesting than our own cats. Either way, I've discovered two very important things in doing my research. One is that we seem to be moving from an innocent time of augmenting our realities for fun or education and moving into a much more worrying era of augmenting our realities because we can't handle a life that is less interesting than the current ones. It has to be mind-blowing or amazeballs. And the second thing I've learnt is that I cannot listen to the Black Eyed Peas now without tasting mint. <laughs> they kill everybody. You know what? I'd love to have a sixth sense, like the ability to read, read minds. minds. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> we all know that some people have less empathy than others. They are the ones that usually end up hosting live comedy podcasts. <laughs> what you may not know is that our faces tend to show our emotions via something called micro-expressions, some of which only last a fifteenth of a second. There are actually seven different types of micro-expression. So, want to guess what they are? Hungry. No. <laughs> Constipated. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that horny. What's horny, that is that a micro-expression? <laughs> There are seven types. Wet. <laughs> Wet, if it's raining. <laughs> Wet. Moist. Moist. Moist is a micro expression. She, she had a moist expression. <laughs> there are seven types of these micro expressions. Disgust, anger, fear, sadness, happiness, surprise, and what Harriet is currently doing, contempt. <laughs> So by watching for these micro-expressions, analysing body language and listening to what actually we're saying, anyone, but mostly police specialists or Darren Brown, can get a good idea if someone is telling the truth. Right. False. Oh. That was a false statement. <laughs> no, I believe you, Lucy, because I'm the good cop. <laughs> false. <laughs> Do you know Darren Brown is just ducks? Just what? what? It's just ducks in an overcoat. <laughs> it's the greatest trick he ever pulled. False. 
Have you ever, have, have you ever seen ducks in an overcoat and Darren Brown in the same room at the same time? Yeah, exactly. And that's why your bread always goes missing when he comes over. <laughs> For those of us who aren't highly trained stage magicians... Or ducks. There is luckily software out there that can capture these micro-expressions really well. But unfortunately, it's not yet good enough to properly interpret them, as the same expression can mean different things in different contexts. For example, in anyone else, a lip curl would signify contempt. But in Elvis's case... <laughs> It actually meant he ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> and that's how we almost know how to read minds. Yay! You with your fancy Darren Browns and tricks and stuff. They're nothing new. It's been around for ages. I've been thinking about how we augment our realities today, as we all have, like Photoshop and filters. They're probably the most insidious thing that we do to give the illusion of a better version of ourselves. She says, as if she actually uses Instagram or computers. Um, but this isn't anything new. If one were a podcast host, one might point their listeners to Holbein's famous portrait of Henry VIII, which featured, <laughs> which featured a very prominent codpiece. <laughs> but uh, even this was nothing compared to his suit of armour, which... Has anyone been to the armoury lately? No, I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> suit of armour, which had a massive and hilarious pill-shaped bulge. When you say pill... Yeah, like, li like literally like... But you know pills are very small. Yeah, so it's like, it's just big and long and um, sticking and out. And you think that's what a pill looks like. <laughs> Did no one ever tell Henry VIII how to properly manage expectations? Because it's like... Yeah, she, but he, he cut their heads off. Yeah, and that's probably where I'm... Because they went saw wrong. how small his really <laughs> was. they were like <laughs> expecting way too much. And she, her micro-expression was disappointment. And so, <laughs> and so her, head got, her head got cut off. Um, so um, <laughs> art, which I like, has also historically augmented reality to create a sense of status. So, for instance, like optical illusions to make an object appear closer or larger or smaller or further away than it actually is. Like that hilarious photo your dad made you take of him holding up the leaning tower of Pisa. That's like, that's like a, well, that's less of a status thing. Um, similarly, architects often made a grand staircase look taller and more impressive by making it big at the bottom and small at the top. That's Again. like how I do my photos as well. <laughs> Pepper's ghost is a famous illusion used in theatres, amusement parks, museums, television and concerts. It's named after the English scientist John Henry Pepper, who popularised the effect in 1862 before going on to form a rap duo with his best friend Derek Salt. <laughs> <laughs> His big idea was to use a hidden mirror image of an object or a room opposite the one that the audience can see and, um, and then over there to... <laughs> stage... In that oncoming traffic. Stage right, stage right, listeners, there is a mirror image of this room but at a 45 degree angle but you can't see it, it's secret. And there's a, like a hidden mirror so you can have something in the secret room, like a ghost, but obviously not a real one, like a person dressed as a ghost, that, that, that is then projected onto the, the real room. Uh, yep. <laughs> anyway, so, so it makes ghosts appear, and it's the same technique, weirdly enough, used by teleprompters. Um, but please don't ask me any more questions about how it works, because I want you to retain a childlike sense of wonder about these things. You know, it's like, magic, magic. <laughs> it was the same technique that allowed the long-dead rapper Tupac Shakur to perform on stage... <laughs> Tupac Shakur... Um, to perform on stage with Dr. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg <laughs> at um, Coachella in 2012. And with that reference, I've given the illusion that the history of augmented reality is a lot cooler than it actually is. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Yeah, no, no, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you know what, Lucy? We should do some grant applications so we can study how future tech could influence our emotions. You want to do paperwork? Good point. How about we use my RS time machine instead? Stock number 225-8172. <laughs> Please, can I come this time? I really want to go on an adventure with you guys. No, no, no. So you never let me You come know this. We need you to stay here in case we happen to bump into anyone in the future who has the exact same voice as you. <laughs> That's so unfair! To the future! <laughs> Oh, the future.
future is amazing. We've arrived in an office. But it's a future office. <laughs> hey, future office person. Oh, wait, hang on. Why are you holding a future gun? I'm an American. <laughs> also, it's not a gun. It's an empathy machine shaped like a gun. Right, so like the one out of Hitchhiker's Guide, the point of view gun. For copyright reasons, we're going with empathy machine shaped like a gun. <laughs> so you invented an empathy gun. Machine shaped like a gun. Awesome. What are you, a doctor, psychiatrist, scientist? Politician. Ah. <laughs> so you use the empathy gun. Machine to... shaped like a gun. <laughs> to better understand what the public are thinking and feeling. The public can go suck it. <laughs> no, this baby imprints my opinion on other people's brains, forcing them to empathize with me. <laughs> and by empathize, I mean completely submit to my every whim. <laughs> that is. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> that is the. Ah. <laughs> no one changes my opinion! I think Danny Minogue is by far the best. You disgust me. But if I shoot you, then... I have no idea what any of Danny's songs were, but she's definitely the best one. <laughs> what have you done? Ooh, can I have a go? Crikey, what? I could improve everything in this room with a Wi-Fi router and a well-spiffing <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> She doesn't sound anything like me. Lucy, we've got to destroy this gun. Machine shaped like a gun. <laughs> Imagine a society where politicians can make the public vote for stupid things that aren't in their interest. <laughs> Plus, I don't want to be English ever again. <laughs> Sorry, losers. I'm immune to the gun, the machine shaped like a gun. Uh, so you can't change my opinion. But I can use my tech skills to make the gun permanently give you Beck's personality. <laughs> Good eye. What's happened to me, cobbers? <laughs> Lucy, have you invented a lazy Aussie stereotype gun? Instead of using empathy guns for evil, I'm going to make everyone be nice on Twitter, recycle more, <laughs> and let me choose two puddings in the supermarket meal deal. <laughs> on one hand, meal deal Nazis really annoy me, and we've saved the future. On the other hand, I'm seriously offended by that accent. <laughs> and I'm seriously worried I've set a Becca-like loose on the future. Let's get out of here! But mate, mate, mate! <laughs> and now it's time to check the mailbox to see what ideas our listeners have for augmenting the human experience. John Cooper has written in to say that he'd like chameleon eyes so he can watch Facebook and TV at the same time. My boyfriend already does that. So... <laughs> <laughs> Very talented. <laughs> Kerry Clegg wants a marsupial pouch so she doesn't ever have to carry a handbag around. That's oh, really good. Me too, I want one. Yeah. <laughs> you could just get one of those. I could put a baby in it. <laughs> Isn't that. No, I won't explain. <laughs> Scott Kelly says he'd like lips on his butt so that people can kiss his ass. <laughs> they can already do that. You don't need lips on your ass for that. <laughs> I like the idea that you can only kiss lips. Like, you're yeah. not going to kiss anything else. <laughs> yeah, prude. <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine Agent wants to swap her nipples for googly eyes. <laughs> yep, genius. Yep. No, nothing wrong with that. At Ian Winter asks us for a prehensile tail. Uh, we can't provide you with that, Ian. Sorry. <laughs> what does prehensile mean again? Moves. Oh, is that all? Well, bends. Like well, a thumb. Why not say bendy then? Or well, I think it means you can grip stuff. And, oh, that? prehensile. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He I hasn't just... said why. That's what scares me. <laughs> What's he going to use it? What are you going to use it for, Ian? Or where? <laughs> what? Where he wants the tail on his body? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> You know what, guys? All this inventorizing has given me a big idea! Oh, no. Yay! Right. Imagine you're at a party. Hooray! A party! Look no. at everyone's silly hats. <laughs> nah. Okay, imagine you're in a meeting. Better. Hooray! A meeting! Look at everyone's silly hats. <laughs> Someone enters the room and it's your job to introduce them. But you can't remember their name. The horror! 
Up until now, the only way to deal with this sort of social faux pas was to remove your clothes, walk out into the snow and commit seppuku in the hope of saving your family's honour. <laughs> I don't think that's quite how that But works. with my new invention, you never have to worry about this again. Introducing Dicky Balls. <laughs> Excuse me? Dicky, short for Don't I Know You, and Balls, short for Eyeballs. I think most people just say eyes. Mm, not where I'm from. In Australia, we call eyeballs balls. Actually, that does sound about right, yeah. And it would explain why earlier you kept complaining about how tired and red your balls were. Yeah, and how your allergies made them all itchy and weepy. <laughs> Can we get back to my invention, please? Mm, yeah, OK. Don't I know you balls are a new upgrade in the human experience. Simply swap out your old eyeballs for a pair of my fancy dicky balls and awkward conversations will be a thing of the past. With the latest in facial recognition technology and access to your social media, you'll instantly see the name and interests of the person you're talking to. That's actually pretty good. Mm, but that's not all, Lucy. The deluxe model also comes with the Internet Movie Database. No longer will you watch a movie and think, where do I know that guy from? Thanks to my dicky balls, <laughs> you'll see the name of the actor you're looking at and a list of their other films, TV appearances and convictions. <laughs> Just in case you don't want to enjoy the film anymore. That would actually be pretty useful. I, I might invest. Me too, if you change the name. Never! <laughs> so I have two yeses from the stage. Audience, will you support my dicky balls? Yes! <laughs> Excellent, it's been funded. A round of applause, please, for Beck's big idea. <laughs> Wait, it sounds like something... Or someone is inside our time machine. What? But I painted that keep out sign on it in large childlike letters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Manny Festation. <laughs> All right. My name's Manny Festation. Manny for short. And this is my band. It's called I Don't Even Need a Band Because I'm Manifestation. I'm post-gender, I'm immortal, I'm an upgrade, I'm a science fiction wet dream come to life, I'm a punk from the future. I'm not telling you when though, losers, you got to find out for yourself, wait and see, innit? <laughs> Future punk and I don't care I've electrified all of my hair So I can heat or cool the air Within a seven metre square It's really handy I'm transhuman Better than you, man Wow! Darwin, bless him, could not foresee How human beings could possibly Defy processes evolutionary Now people can live under the sea We are transhuman well, we're better than you, man, you better believe it Turning weakness into strength There is no limit to finger legs Now we've got a few extra senses The logical conclusion of contact lenses We are transhuman oh, better than you, man I've got lots of things that you don't I've got the balance of a mountain goat I've even had a saxophone surgically attached inside my throat. <laughs> Goodbye, genetically transferred disease. Don't hack my brain implant, please. I need that to do all of my thinking. I've outsourced everything, even blinking. I'm transhuman. Wow, better than human. I'm better. I am transhuman. From a band better than you, man. Yeah, you do I hate you all. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, what have we all learned today? I thought this was a comedy show, not a lecture, because I really wasn't taking notes. What about you, Harriet? What have you learned? That cod piece is the best word ever. <laughs> Well, I've learnt that we could be in for a very interesting future. But we've already been to the future, Lucy, and it was terrible. No, Beck. Thanks to the many worlds theory, that was just one possible option. All right, then, Ulrika Johnson. Why not give us your forecast? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Dr Lucy Rogers! <laughs> Let me try 
transport you to the future. The year is 2150. Children are chasing each other around the school field, easily running 100 metres in less than 10 seconds. This is thanks to the genetic modifications their parents paid to have whilst they were still in the womb. However, look over at the nearby athletic stadium. The adults there have yet to break the nine second barrier. Why? Because the Olympics Committee has deemed that any augmentation, even those made pre-birth, disqualifies you from competing. Soon though, there won't be anyone left to compete in the regular Olympics as everyone is now forced to undergo extensive surgery in order to augment themselves so they can keep up with the robots taking over our jobs. Firefighters have infrared eyes for night vision, as do burglars. <laughs> Mechanics have spanners for fingers and Piers Morgan is finally getting a much needed sense of humour transplant. <laughs> Bored of the learning of the French? Don't worry. In the same way that flip phones mimic Star Trek communicators, we can now understand any language simply by inserting a robo babel fish in your ear, similar to that in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Extra arms, metal, wheels instead of feet, all of these are now commonplace. Rather than getting a piercing, rebellious teenagers now strive to look as unaugmented as possible and accusing someone of having big ears is no longer considered rude. So who knew that Prince Charles would be the cutting edge of body fashion? <laughs> All this variety, modification and customization means that there's no longer any such thing as a normal person. Meaning engineers can finally fulfill their twin dreams of being accepted in society. <laughs> and having USB ports up each nostril. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my forecast for the future of augmentation. And with that, we've reached the end of the show. Aww. But there's just time for some listener messages. Yay! Claire from Bracknell writes, As a male delivery worker... But she's called Claire. <laughs> Barry from Dudley has written to protest angrily at the media's portrayal of humans who use one keyboard with their left hand and one with their right hand, as he thinks that is just stereotyping. <laughs> really? <laughs> Nassim from Swanage called us to say she was shocked to read that 44% of women don't wear a sports bra whilst exercising. And to many, this research will come as a slap in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. I've shown you how we can all read minds. I've shown you that every century has had its dead and brown. And I'm looking forward to cleaning my dicky balls. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everyone for listening, and we can't wait for you to upgrade to the next episode of the Design Spark Podcast. <laughs> the Design Spark Podcast starred Lucy Rogers, Beck Hill, and Harriet Brain. It was written by the cast with additional material from Stu Cooper, Stephen Mulwinney, and Daniel Page. Stu Cooper and Kate Hinksman wrote the sketch, and Mike Sheldon, Darren Ross, and Tiffany Richards, the listener messages. The show was a Why Did the Chicken production recorded live at the Rosemary Branch Theatre by Andy Partington from Swift Professional Audio. Becky Singh was creative consultant, the script editor was Stu Cooper, and the executive producer, Daniel Page. If you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to rate us on iTunes and tell your friends. <laughs>